Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us for another webinar from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. Tonight, we have a special guest, Dr. Giuseppe Lanzino from Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. He's a vascular neurosurgeon, and he'll be talking to us about very exciting new endovascular options for treatment of brain aneurysms. Giuseppe, thank you again for being with us. We're very excited, and take it away. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, for me to uh, discuss some of the newer advances, uh, particularly as they pertain to endovascular treatment of uh, intracranial um, aneurysms. When uh, we think about uh, endovascular um, options, uh, there is no question that uh, the simple uh, detachable coils, which were introduced in the early 90s, uh, has uh, represented uh, a major um, advance in the endovascular treatment of um, aneurysms. As we all know, though, uh, endovascular coils uh, do have uh, limitations, and therefore, uh, 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 since the, the, um, in the mid-late 90s, several coil modifications were uh, introduced in an attempt to try to improve uh, our ability to obtain uh, complete uh, co-packing and uh, obliteration of um, aneurysms. Still, there were problems, particularly with the large aneurysms, aneurysms with the large neck, and therefore various techniques were developed, such as uh, the balloon-assisted technique, where coils were placed inside the aneurysm with the assistance of an inflatable balloon uh, maintained inflated during coil deployment uh, in order to um, uh, in order to um, uh, prevent uh, coil herniation into the parent vessel. And then uh, we have assisted to a um, widespread diffusion of uh, stent-assisted uh, coil, coiling where a stent was used uh, particularly, again, with the large uh, and the wide neck aneurysms in, uh, um, in uh, trying to uh, improve on uh, our degree of um, obliteration and complete treatment, but still there were a lot of problems uh, related, uh, again, uh, to those aneurysms that because of the large volume were not uh, ideally amenable uh, uh, to these uh, treatments. In more recent years, there have been some attempts in uh, uh, trying to uh, obliterate aneurysms with uh, onyx, a new embolic agent, but uh, again, uh, uh, the, this uh, procedure is uh, very um, challenging from a technical point of view, and a uh, large study in, done in uh, Europe had demonstrated that there were problems as related particularly to uh, delayed uh, vessel occlusion and uh, uh, recanalization of the aneurysm. In uh, the past uh, five years, uh, uh, the development of uh, so-called uh, flow diverters has uh, really uh, triggered a lot of um, uh, enthusiasm as uh, the, the introduction of flow diverters uh, might uh, represent uh, a new uh, paradigm in the treatment of intracranial um, aneurysms in that uh, with the flow diverter, we have moved away from uh, treatment of the aneurysm itself, but what we are trying to do, we are trying to treat uh, the uh, segment of the vessels that is diseased, and that's the reason why the aneurysm has formed there in the first place. So uh, what uh, a, flow, a flow diverter uh, does is that uh, it uh, uh, will uh, uh, redirect flow away from the aneurysm, back into the no, uh, parent vessel, and uh, over time, uh, this uh, flow redirection has the effects of inducing uh, progressive uh, uh, clotting and uh, formation of a clot inside the aneurysm, and as this clot progresses, eventually leads uh, to uh, occlusion of the aneurysm itself. A flow diverter is uh, different uh, than a traditional uh, stent in that uh, the, um, um, the porosity of the device is uh, very low. 